Hello and welcome to module 1 of lesson 2. As discussed in the introduction of lesson 2, you will learn about PyPlot in this section. PyPlot is a part of Matplotlib focused on creating plots. PyPlot is actually the collection of several functions, each targeting a specific components. The functionalities of PyPlot is inspired from MATLAB. So, in case if you don't know about MATLAB, MATLAB is one of the best mathematical computing tool out there in the industry. So, in fact, the full form of MATLAB is Matrix Laboratory. As I said earlier, each PyPlot function makes some changes to figure or plot, such as creating a figure itself, creating a plot area, adding data, defining axis, and so on. So PyPlot is specifically for that purpose. So now we will see some of the key features of PyPlot. So PyPlot is defined inside matplotlib package and it is state-based interface to matplotlib. So what is mean by state-based? State-based means various states are preserved across function call. So it keeps track of current component applied in the plot. Let's say you applied some access label. So state-based interface means it knows that you, you have applied this function of pyplot, right? So second one is it provides a MATLAB-like way of plotting. So it is basically inspired from MATLAB. The functionality of pyplot is inspired from the MATLAB. The similar feature is also being provided in pyplot. I will not talk about MATLAB in this session because it's not the MATLAB topic. But for just understanding, it is inferred from MATLAB library. The third one is pyplot is mainly intended for interactive plots. Once we will plot this, you will understand how you can interact with the plot. And the fourth one and last one is it is collection of common style functions that, that we already talked about list of all many functions which target specific application or specific component of a plot. So that's the background of pyplot. Now get set go and write some real code in Jupyter Notebook to visualize the plot. So for that you need to open Jupyter Notebook as I discussed in the previous lesson. So you can refer that and you can open Jupyter Notebook via any of the two method discuss. I have already opened Jupyter Notebook. So my Jupyter Notebook looks like this. Okay. So I'll start by creating a Python file. So we can go head over here and click on Python 3.7 or whichever version is installed on your system. Alright. Okay. I will name this file as lesson 2. That's it. And underscore 1. So this is the lesson 2 in the first file. Okay. Rename it. You, in order to use matplotlib and pyplot, we need to import them in Jupyter Notebook. So how we can import that? So you can write import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Okay, this is convention and uh, what it means I will just tell you. So I am importing pyplot package from matplotlib as a plt so plt is an alias you can name it anything that you want but conventionally the developer and the community uses plt so we'll stick to the convention so that it becomes easy for anyone to understand and even for us to understand this is the one method that we can use the second way is you can write from matplotlib import pyplot as plt both have same meaning. It is just a convention whichever you want to use you can use it. For the time being I will be sticking to the first one that is more convenient for me. Okay, So I'll be sticking around with the first one. So I'll just simply delete it. And we'll just run. This will not do anything because I'm, I have just imported the library. Alright. The second thing that we can do is what we want to plot let's say we want to plot a data which is like uh, we have to put the data in list one two three four five let's say i want to print one two three four five in order to plot this data we can write plt the alias name and dot plot so dot plot is a function inside pyplot and then you can provide the data 
and then plt dot show right so this will show a plot of the data so here we go and we have the result now we can display this one two three four five in this format and you have you already know that in Jupyter notebook you get the result in the same uh, in the in the same cell and very next to the code okay the syntax for plot is they need two variable x and y and x is the data in the x axis and y is the data in the y axis but by default if you provide only one axis the or only one parameter like one two three four five that is a single data pyplot will consider this as a continuous value of y and accordingly it will create a value of x starting from zero so in the figure you can see we have not defined x x is automatically created starting from zero till it satisfies till it can plot value of five so it required zero to four in the x axis to plot a value from one to five in the y axis okay i hope this is clear so we'll now see how we can plot x and y let's say specifically uh, we have data like x data x data equal to um, i will write at this time one same data that will one two three four five right and i'll create another data for y axis which is data y data equal to sorry not date data equal to i wanted to plot a square version of x variable in y right so it's a one four 9 16 and 25 right so i wanted to plot these two data x axis will be 1 2 3 4 5 and y axis will be 1 4 9 16 and 25 okay so we can try use the same method plt dot plot here we can say uh, x data comma y data okay and then plt dot show okay now if we plot this one you'll see the data is plotted and the x axis is bounded by the x value which is in x data and y axis is displaying all the value that is available in y data however there is no restriction that you have to define x data before and y data before you can do so by writing directly here so you can write directly here this value i will just copy and paste it and here I will copy this Y data and paste it. This will also work. Uh, there is no problem at all. So even if you run this code, there is no changes, right? Same thing is plotted. And there is no meaning of X and Y data because that are not being used in the program. Now if you think why we are using X data and Y data. So this is a convenience. Convenience means in case if you wanted to change something, you have to manually change here and here both the things let's say it has been used at multiple times so you have to change this at all the places so it's a convenient option to change if to make a variable here itself and anything if you wanted to change at any point of time you can change directly here it gets updated everywhere wherever this data is being used i hope you understood right that's the basic of the plotting and i hope you understand and now you can also practice and plot some of the data that you have that's it for this section in the next section, we will see how we can add some more features to this plot using plot method itself. So that's it for this section. Thank you for joining with me in this one. I will see you in the next one.